Well, the K2 Pro finally showed up. And in this video, I'm gonna go over some of the features of the K2 Pro, the differences between the K2 Plus and the K2 Pro, and then I'll give you my thoughts on the K2 Pro after being able to print with it. So hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have enough information to be able to make a decision on whether the K2 Pro is right for you. So let's run down the features of the K2 Pro before we get into the differences between the K2 Pro and the K2 Plus. So the K2 Pro has a build size of 300 by 300 by 300, which is 300 squared. It has speeds of up to 600 MMS, acceleration up to 20,000 MMS. It has the same tool head, just like the K2 Plus, except for the hot end on the K2 Pro can only go up to 300C while the bed can heat up to 110C and the active heated chamber can go up to 60C. Now it has two cameras inside the chamber, one of them being mounted right here, just like on the K2, and then the other one's gonna be in the tool head and that's your AI camera. Now of course, it's got RFID capability to read the filaments and then of course you got your USB, your Wi-Fi 2.4 and ethernet on the back. And it has a whopping 32 gigabytes of internal storage. And one of my favorite things is they brought over the same exact body design as they did from the K2 Plus, the die-cast aluminum frame. Now, I don't know if you saw Nathan Build's robots video on the K2 Pro, but he actually took a 2x4 to the K2 Plus, as you can see right here in the video. <laughs> So yeah, this frame is sturdy and I don't think they should change it anytime soon. Now on the K2 Pro, you have the step servo motors just like the K2 Plus, except for this one, it has three. You got one on the X, one on the Y, and then one on the extruder. So now that I've ran down the basics of the K2 Pro, let me tell you some things that I noticed after I unboxed the printer and started using it. So one thing I noticed on the inside of the machine, it has only one side fan, whereas the K2 Plus has two. And in the very back of the machine where it kicks out all the discarded filament, that chute right there, it's actually a two-piece design now. It has screws on each side so you can lift it off and be able to service the wipe mechanism back there. And another thing I noticed on the inside of the machine, it has a lot less cosmetic plastic that covers things and which that doesn't really make any difference, but that was a little bit different. And it comes with a little bit different build plate. It comes with a texture build plate but this one's gold and a little bit different than your standard black plate that comes on the k2 plus now obviously the biggest differences in this printer and the k2 plus are going to be size and honestly to me i feel like the k2 pro is really just a mini version of the k2 plus and that's not a bad thing it's actually a great thing because you get all of the features that are in the k2 plus you're going to get those in the k2 pro for the most part. Now you're gonna sacrifice a very little bit in print speed because of the acceleration. The acceleration on the K2 Pro is 20,000 and the acceleration on the K2 Plus is 30,000. Now those aren't nominal differences, but they are differences that will affect print times minimally. And of course your K2 Pro can handle all your standard filaments, your PLAs, your pet Gs, your carbon fibers, all of that good stuff. And it can even handle some non-standard filaments like TPUs and those harder to print filaments, such as this TPU right here. This is Morphex. It's a filament that we're coming out with and it starts out as a 95A and then it morphs into a 70A, which is a really soft filament. Now the benefits of printing with something like this is that 95A is very easy to print with, but the downside of printing with 95A is that once you print it out, it's kind of stiff. With this Morphex right here, it kind of solves that problem. It gives you the really easy TPU to print with, but then it also, when it morphs, it gives you that really soft TPU finished product so be on the lookout for that and the k2 pro can print it as long as you print it with a top mounted spool i have it here right here for the video just for convenience but when i used it i used it on a top spool to avoid the whole restriction of the ptfe tubes now the biggest thing with tpu and these printers is the resistance you get in the ptfe tube now if you just take some tpu and try to hand feed it through the ptfe tube and see the resistance that you get now just imagine the machine trying to yank it through there while it's trying to print. It's not very reliable. Eventually it's going to snag up or it's going to hit a resistance that it just can't overcome. And so the best thing to do is just eliminate that drag, eliminate that resistance and print 
straight on top of the printer and just feed the filament directly into your print head and you'll have a lot more success like that. Now I also do a TPU mod on these K2 series printers where I swap out the spring. I've got a whole nother video on that. I'll link that right there. And if you want to get a TPU mod kit for your printer, you can go to our website, stay ready to 3 dprintcom and you can transform your K2 printer into a TPU beast with that. Okay, so I ran down the features of the K2 Pro for you. I pointed out some key differences between the K2 Pro and the K2 Plus. Now let's talk about problems real quick because I know when the K2 Plus came out, several people had problems. Now those people are in the two or 3% of people because the majority of people love their K2 Plus, just like me. I have three K2 Plus machines and I got rid of all my K1 series to buy K2 Plus machines. Now, if you ask me the biggest problem with the K2 Pluses was FedEx and shipping. A lot of K2 Pluses got damaged during shipping and they arrived with problems. Because I can tell you, Creality physically tests every single printer before it leaves the factory. That's why when you get it and you put your filament in there, some random color comes out the nozzle because they printed with that printer before they boxed it up. So it was 100% working when they shipped it out. Now, do some of you receive faulty printers occasionally in the very rare instant? Yes, but nine out of 10, something happened during shipping, something jarred loose, something got bumped. I mean, these are huge machines. Now the K2 Pro isn't as big as the K2 Plus. And let me tell you, when I got this printer, I thought the K2 Plus was packed well, this thing was packed well and it had a lot of rigid plastic and foam in there and you're gonna need some type of electric screwdriver to get this thing apart unless you want to be there all day with allen keys now what i like to use are these fantic tools so i've had this e1 max for about a month now and i think i've charged it one time but with fantic they all have that metal design and you pop this thing up it's all magnetic and spring loaded and it's got like 50 something bits on there and here's the little precision driver right there it's all wireless and it, you can get in there and in little places whatever you need to do now on the k2 pro it had some heavy duty stuff so i was kind of glad that fantix sent us out this k2 ultra because this is a drill driver and it's all digital you just hit buttons on this thing and on the back it has numbers that tell you the strength and all that stuff you can change it from drill to driver right there and i use this on the heavy duty bolts and just like all authentic products they have these pop out designs where like if you look right here on this one that comes out of the base and you press that button and there's all your drivers. They make really good use of little space. So I've used Fantic way before they ever contacted us because check this out. I've got the T1 Max right here. This is a Fantic soldering iron and I've sold over a thousand Stay Ready to 3D Print LED upgrades and they were made with this. You can see how dirty this thing is because I use it every single day. And same thing with this, just like every other tool they have, it has a pop out as well. You pull that out and there's your soldering bit right there now the cool thing is fantic agreed to give you guys some stuff one of the things that we're going to do for the fantic giveaway is we're going to give you guys a f2 master and this is their rotary kit and it has the same cool design like everything else it has the aluminum metal housing and then on the rotary You've got your wireless rotary here, and then you got this carousel design on this thing. You just click it, and then it has a slew of bits there. I mean, a ton to choose from. And this thing is pretty strong. I was using a cheap Amazon one before I got this one, and yeah, I'm, I'm glad they sent this out. But you guys will love that. Now, Fantic, they have a ton of stuff. So they even have like Dyson style hair dryers. I mean, they got all kinds of stuff. That's the F2 Master Box. That's the K2 Ultra Box. And then this one, it's an Apex V8 Slim. So this is the Apex V8 and it's a mini vacuum cleaner. I'm probably going to throw this one in my truck. But the cool thing about it is on the exhaust port, they give you these little tips that you can actually use as an inflator. It's genius. I love it. But yeah, we're going to do a giveaway on Discord. And the only thing you have to do to enter the Fantic giveaway is be subscribed on YouTube and be a member of our Discord because we do all our giveaways in Discord now. And then all you have to do is watch out for your notifications on Discord and we'll announce the giveaway and then you just hit enter and you're in there. That's it. Oh, and that's not all that Fantic gave you guys. Check this out. They gave me a promo code, which I'm going to put in the description for the T1 Max. 37% off for the T1 Max. That is nuts. That's the biggest promo code that I've gotten from any vendor that sent us stuff. And they did that for us 
for you guys. Watch out for the giveaway. Check out the promo code. Go get the T1 Max 37% off on Amazon. You can't beat it. And it usually delivers next day. It's crazy good. Okay, so back to the K2 Pro and shipping and all of that stuff. The point I was trying to make was that the K2 Plus was so big and FedEx did such a crappy job at delivering it. I believe that they created a bunch of issues that the K2 Plus normally wouldn't have had. Now with the K2 Pro being a little bit smaller, a little easier to manage, I carried it in my house all by myself without struggling. When the K2 Plus arrived, the FedEx guy showed up and looked at me and asked me to help. I've never had the FedEx guy ask for help, but with the K2 Plus, he, he's like, hey man, can you give me a hand, right? This one, it was on my doorstep. I woke up and it was there. So I really don't think that the K2 Pro is going to have near as many issues as the K2 Plus had, which it didn't have a ton. 97% of the K2 Pluses just work and they work well, just like all of mine did. None of mine had issues. But in that little small three to four, two, percent of people who had issues with the k2 plus i don't think half of those will make it to the k2 pro just because you're gonna lose a lot of those fedex issues that were caused during shipping so should you get the k2 pro and is it right for you well Honestly, only you know that, and it just depends on what build size you need. Do you need a 350 by 350? If you don't, then you can get all of the K2 Plus features in the K2 Pro. Now, yes, you're gonna lose a tad bit of speed, but do I think you'll notice it? Probably not. And you're losing one interior fan. Is it gonna make a huge difference? No, because it's a smaller printer. So honestly, this is the mini me of the K2 Plus. It's actually a pretty good deal because if you ask me, you're getting all the features of the K2 Plus in a smaller package. And if you don't need that bigger package, then why spend the money? So it's up to you to decide if you need the K2 Pro or not. I gave you everything that I knew about it and what it could do. So hopefully this video helped you and comment down below if you plan on buying the K2 Pro or if you decided not to get it, comment and let me know why. And don't forget about the Fantic giveaway over in Discord. So go join Discord, subscribe here. Thank you to everyone who's already a subscriber. We were one of the fastest growing 3D printing channels on YouTube in 2025 and we're gonna keep up that momentum but we couldn't do it without you guys, so thank you. So until next time, stay ready to 3D print. We'll see you in the next one.